私の涙が涙みなさんこんにちは I have a new face! Yes! These were drawn by Cozy Ghost, who's an amazing artist that you should totally follow. And they also made the cover art for my new song, Emotions, which is what I will be breaking down in this video. Segway. I'll be talking about the overall meaning of the song, the music theory behind it, and diving into some of the instrument tracks that make it all happen. So, if it wasn't abundantly clear, the term emotions is a mix of the words emotions and oceans. I feel like I'm pretty high in the emotional people spectrum, and that I'm constantly flooded with new waves of it all the time. To get a bit personal, I've also experienced a fair bit of trauma, and even after moving to the opposite end of the country, the current of those feelings still follow me. And that's where the lyrics come from when I say, I also stuck this Unicode character in the middle to replace the O, which, to be honest, I just thought kind of looked cool and stood out a bit more. <laughs> so, to get into the music theory, I have been thinking about this song with two distinct halves since the first half loops one set of chords and the second half loops a different set of chords. The split between these two halves happens in the middle of the second synth break, and as a result, it acts as probably what I would consider the climax of the song. There's only one verse in this track, which is kind of weird, but not out of the ordinary for the stuff that I make. And as for the key,、uh, we're probably in D major,、um, but it's also kind of A to. You'll see what I mean. The vocal melody is literally two notes the entire time, <laughs> primarily living in F sharp and moving down to E occasionally. These notes, respectively, are the median and the supertonic in our key of D, so it doesn't feel too unresolved. The harmony behind the main melody also plays a D in some points as well, which helps. The melody of our main synth lead at first mimics the vocal melody, but at a fifth up. This works to establish that rhythm and relative note relationship as our main theme, but soon after begins to branch out into neighboring notes and rhythms. You'd think that it'd sound weird,、uh, since a fifth up from the median is the leading tone,、um, but the melody moves differently here and treats A basically as its own tonic, which is a fifth up from our key of D. If you transpose this back down, it sounds something like this. Which, I mean, it works. It definitely has a different feel, though. And when we move into the second half of the song, the synth lead makes a major melodic jump. Instead of going down to A like we have so far, we jump up a sixth to hit A an octave higher. This interval is far wider than any other melodic movement made in this track and helps set that moment apart, as well as signify to the listener that we've gone into a different space. At the end of this phrase, we also hit a G sharp as a passing note, which is the only note that sets D major and A major apart. As a result, it briefly confirms the tonic of the synth melody to be an A, and also gives a touch of Lydian flavor to the overall song, though the bass below it is still firmly a G natural. It may seem crazy that a little passing note like this can make such a big difference here, but check out how much darker it would sound if we stayed entirely in D. Moving on to the instruments themselves, the lead sound is pretty simple. This is Radon, a default plugin from Surge, and I think all I changed in this patch was moving the filter cutoff up a bit. It's got an EQ on it, a saturator, compressor, reverb, delay, you know, the normal stuff. And then behind it is another default surge patch named Butter, which has an amp simulator on it and a fully wet reverb to support the lead, give it some bite and space, but not take over. I use a couple different pianos and glockenspiels for the main two chord progressions, along with some fills of them here and there. Most of these are from Piano Book running through Decent Sampler. Easily my favorite is this Frozen Glock from Dan Keen, who's super cool and always putting out high quality stuff. You really need to get this thing, it's free. I want to hear more songs with this. Oh my god, it's so pretty. For my vocals, there's a couple things going on. The first part has the main melody and two layers of harmony behind it, and then halfway through that section, another higher layer comes in on top of it. The second half of the song replaces the sung vocal harmony with a polyphonic vocoder, because I absolutely love vocoders, running through another default surge patch as its carrier. This is doubled with my drier vocals at first, but then stands alone with a super wide, wet reverb to wash out the space. 
Also filling in space are some pads and other accompaniment thingies. Among these are this one from Piano Book for some obligatory watery sounds, and this patch from Pad Shop, which I liked and wanted to include because it sounds like a whale. I also want to show you this weird bit of ear candy that shows up a couple times in the song. I took a bunch of tiny clips from random other songs of mine, stringed eight of them together in bar, and messed with them a bunch using glitch plugins, delays, a filter, etc. In the context of everything else in the song, these sound way less present than they do when they're soloed. I use this trick quite heavily in some other songs coming up, so keep an ear out for that. The other elements in this track that I have yet to mention are a pretty normal drum beat, some swells made from reversed impact samples, and a 909 bass that comes in starting at the verse. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. Check this song out on Spotify and all other streaming services. And if you like this breakdown, stay tuned and subscribe because I've got more videos like this coming out soon. I hope you have a good day. Ja <laughs> matane. That's fine. We'll just keep that one, I think. Okay, goodbye.